All right, here we go. Hot sheet evaluation for October 17th, 2022. So as you know, I've been coming to you each week and I'm giving you the last 72 hours on what's called the hot sheet on MLS. And I feel it's the best indicator of the question of Casey, how's the market? It just kind of shows you real life numbers and what's going on. So I'm going to roll through this with you, hit the high points. Then you guys feel free to ask me questions as always. So let me go ahead and share the screen, do the process here and get you guys rolling. So I'm gonna move myself down here and let me widen this out a little bit. And here we go. So going into the week of the 17th, as you can see at the top, this is for the last 72 hours, okay? So it's gonna give us a healthy indication. So it's not a seven day window, but it's some of our busiest transactional time. So it's healthy. So let's go over here to this pop down window. We will start with the basics first and then we'll talk through it. So over the last 72 hours, 26 new listings, all right? So we've been at um, in the mid thirties over the last couple of weeks at the first of the month, really into September, we were kind of in the fifties, uh, you know, on that. So it's tapering off a little bit as we move through October. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on because some of the downward pressure on pricing has been the amount of new listings coming to market, all right? So let's see what's happening with that. Pendings. 33, these are properties that have gone under contract. 33 in that last 72 hour window. So 26 came on, 33 went off, all right? Closings, 26 closings. So even amount, new listings came on 26, closed 26 and took 33 under contract, okay? So those are healthy in terms of balance on new listings. You know, if we're at 80 new listings and we got five contracts, then I can easily answer how the market is, okay? But here's what I like to reiterate, because I, I get this question and I know what's going on in the news and I know that interest rates are having some effects on certain uh, sectors, something cities, certain cities, excuse me, but we've got transactions going on every day as evident, okay? So, but what's the biggest indicator on that? What's getting done and what's been most appealing? And you look and we've got 52 price changes, all right? so. 26 new listings, but we also had 52 adjust their price. So what's the story, Casey? So the story is this, we are doing transactions, but I can tell you with the days on market, very few of those are coming to market instantly and immediately going under contract. If you are, you are really coming out at something compelling because most of the contracts are happening on these price changes where they've done a little bit of time on the market and they're moving the needle to get right back in front of the buyer so that it's compelling enough that it makes sense to them. Okay. So that's what's going on. And so when you see this many price changes, there's feedback out there that it's actually working. All right. And look, this isn't, this isn't any kind of desperation. This is, this was normal. This is how you did business. You would go out there to price. Look, the ones that are most successful. And if there's any sellers watching that were thinking about doing this, you still can come on the market immediately and have immediate impact and not go through this price reduction process. I think we're still, we're still, we're still kind of caught in the habit of, man, I don't want to price it out there too little and sell it so quick and feel like we gave money away. But I, I think it's time to really kind of revisit that. What's the most compelling price that we can come to market and really get this thing done and not have to go through the process of price changes or worry about the amount of inventory that may be coming up. Okay. So anyway, that's the story. 26 new, 26 closed, 33 under contract, 52 price reductions, okay? Now, let's go through some highlights. Um, this one on Longview is pretty interesting. This is a goal front. This is the third reduction on this one in the last three weeks. I think there's just a strategy here to kind of keep this in front of everybody. Um, but that's a goal front property on the east end of 30A, just under 13 million. About just, They just creeped under $2,000 a foot on that one, okay? Um, new listing, this is Prominent South, just behind, used to be the hub, now it's the big chill. All right, so that's a popular area. Um, Bluefish, I love these. So look, anything under $600,000 that you can sleep in on 30A is worth paying attention to. This is a two bedroom, only 858 square feet, built in 1967. So this is an area that we call the, uh, the Brickyard. So this is close to Blue Mountain Beach. And if you're driving around there, like if you're going to Blue Mabel or anywhere around Adagio, if you know that area, these are the little brick homes that sit there. 
And a lot of them are this size, two bedroom, 858. But I can tell you, people are doing some really fun things with these older homes. They are really um, embracing the old Florida feel and they are really uh, making them into beach cottage on the inside. So um, I believe this one um, has not been totally uh, renovated. So there's still some value here. You can pick this up under 600, put some love on it. And um, they also rent really well. So that's a fun one. Let's see what else is on here. Um, new listing on the Bay for 2.3. And then a lot of this, this seascape right here, these new ones that are pending, um, these are new construction opportunities for a development that is yet to start construction. So that's 24 months out, but that's a new project going on on seascape. So if you're somebody that's looking for new inventory, you can take a look at that. Um, let's go under contract. Um, actually, let's skip down to closings. This is the one y'all like the best. Casey, what closed? Anything fun out there? And by fun, y'all mean expensive. So let's scroll down through here. Let's pick some out. Uh, there's something on Veracruz. So that's going to be a boating property. So that's on the harbor, 1995 home. Beautiful boat sitting out front, but a five bedroom, something for about 770 um, a foot. And that's 80 feet on the canal there. So a lot of play that can be done there. This is High Point. Man, another closing at High Point. This is a two bedroom for 2.55 million. So Guys, high point, that's $1,900 a foot. We're talking about a condo, East End 30A. High point is right adjacent to Rosemary Beach, right between Alice and Rosemary Beach, which has just become a sweet spot. But high point is one of the most amazing stories. Um, let me see if I can pull the history on this one. When did they purchase? No, it's been that long. Um, but I mean, I remember, everybody's got these stories, but I am remembering when this one was... Just let me see what this originally sold for. Um, <laughs> these folks have owned it since 1996. They paid 300,000 for it. I love that. Good for them. That is fantastic and selling it for 2.55 million. But just amazing turnaround down there. Um, big house right down the street from Shunt Gully for 3.2. This is a brand new construction. Big house, 6,200 square feet. Um, seven bedrooms, ton of rental potential. I mean, I bet that thing's going to do $300,000 in rental. So you see these big houses right there next to Shunk Gully. And here's an Alice cell. This is going to be off the Gulf. This is a 2011 build in a really good location with good view, selling for um, even $8 million on that one, $2,600 a foot, okay? South side in Alice. Um, so somebody's having a happy day there. That is fantastic. So we've really, again, the story continues. We've got, we have got, um, transactions happening across the board at all price points. All right. So we are feeling the, um, interest rates mainly because it's a talking point. People want to know how much higher is it going to go. There's a lot of people think it's settled in, um, but there's still a lot of cash in the market. So they may be financing some on the back end, but a lot of cash at play, but, as we say always, there is something happening every day and we're just identifying if you're selling where you need to be and for buyers, what makes sense. And we're going out there and creating opportunities, not necessarily waiting for all these price reductions to happen. But anyway, midway through October, it is busy down here. The weather is amazing. So if, as always, if we can help with anything in the meantime, before you uh, get down here, just feel free to uh, let us know. Talk to you soon.